Yo, welcome Fronies to that in-depth PvP guide for the crossbow dagger. Yesterday we already went over the green gear, how to get it the fastest, same for the blue gear, how to set it up, how to farm it. And today I want to share the PvP setup that I will be running on global release and that I highly suggest you to follow. I have created this build not by just like slapping some random purples together. I have played over 800 hours of crossbow dagger on the Korean server and some people might remember the video where I shared how to calculate the effective DPS on any skill and I used this method to make sure that the health and tankiness the build has is having the best ratio for the damage output. I am pretty sure that that build is extremely optimized. Usually in all the videos we started going over the skills. Here we will actually go over the gear first because most of the skills are already known from the video yesterday. There's only a couple adaptions from like the leveling style to the PvP style. And also I know that some people are eager to have like a PvE build running or whatever. I do not recommend setting up your character for PvE if you want to play any PvP, of course, if you only want to play PvE, set it up for PvE only. But if you also want to try some PvP or whatever, make sure you're running a PvP build. The PvE content of the game is not that hard. Even if you are in a PvP setup and you would lose like maybe what, like 10% damage in a dungeon, it will not matter at all. Trust me, run a solid PvP setup. And then once you have your PvP setup fully upgraded and you're done with it, then go and upgrade your PvE setup or the adaptions to get more farm speed. So similar to um, the green and the blue in the guide, I have made an overview for you where that shows exactly where you can farm all of the items that we are talking about the fastest. And maybe one side note here is that if you are getting level 50, the only dungeon you will basically be running at the start is Cave of Destruction. Because Cave of Destruction will give you the suit, the bracers, and one of your weapons. That is really valuable. Option number two is that you are rushing your weapon by farming 10 dungeon tokens of each level 50 dungeon, because then you can craft the Dimensional Essence Salvation and if you're having two of those and some other materials, you can actually already craft your purple weapon. This is something you should be rushing if you're getting unlucky with drops. Now let's go over all the reasons why we are going into different perks in the gearing process and how those process help us reaching all those valuable thresholds. Important to note here is that build is 100% viable for global release. That means we are talking about purple tier one gear here. We are talking about level 50. None of the stuff that will basically not be available on global it's all removed here. So you have a clean global release build. The crossbow that we are using is going to be the Rex Shimmerous Rake. It has the effect that offhands are healing us. That is going to be really valuable when we are doing our spin to win. We are getting main stat like dexterity and bonus damage. While bonus damage here on that build has a really high value because we will have quite a lot of offhand procs that will get bonus damage going. And bonus damage is calculated in a way that that if you attack with multiple attacks, the bonus damage is being added on every attack. And if you would have like one big burst skill, it would only be added once. So for example, if you're hitting with your quick fire eight times, you will basically get the bonus damage eight times on that one skill. For the runes, the synergy that we are looking for the most is actually the shield block penetration chance. This will allow us to have a fairly good play against tanks later on. In general, what we want to stack as an offensive source it's going to be hit. So you will see it. We are, we are taking it in resonance. We are taking it in rune. We are taking it in our trade. Like hit is going to be the key factor to actually be able to kill people in PvP. Because as soon as other people are able to stack a decent amount of evasion and your hit is behind, your PvP experience will be horrible. So try to focus that also while you are trading to keep your hit up as one of the highest priorities. Some people, they are going, for example, 50 strength to get the um, additional 100 heavy attack chance. I have actually found out with some calculations that it's actually better 
to run the Miracle of Mother Nature clothing for the 7.8% heavy attack chance and the 8 stats rather than any other suit and forfeiting the um, heavy attack chance right here. Because we are able with that setup to get to the 15k HP anyways and I would say as a DPS like 15 to 16k is about the sweet spot of health where you want to be at. So our offhand is the Ligorous Forney Edge and similar now we are going for shield block, penetra uh, shield block penetration chance right here we are getting into hit. Important to note here is that if we are using a mobility skill so that would be Nimble Leap or Shadow Strike our base damage is increasing by 50 that is quite valuable here and helps us a lot with bursting. Now, when we are looking at um, our gear, there are three types of evasion. Melee, magic, and range. You can never stack all three. That will give you an, an odd composition. It's also not worth to stack evasion if you're not able to reach certain thresholds. We will be able to reach far more than 2000 evasion here in that build, but we are only focusing on magic evasion and ranged evasion. So basically, versus melee we are more or less fucked so our highest counterplay would be a great sword dagger player an assassin but we're having some other things in our kit that will help us with those and that is for example the um the rune effects here where we are stacking melee heavy attack evasion as well as on the as well as on the accessories where we are stacking stun resistance because how are you dying versus those you either get like the really um, heavy attacks from the melee that kill you or you get stunned while you do not have your CC removal stone up and all of this. But there is counterplays to it. And with this setup, you will not survive every assassin attack. But I would say you're surviving like 60 to 70% of the attacks if you're playing correct. So whenever it's possible, for that reason, we will take magic and ranged evasion for our traits. If we are now talking about the resonance effect on our gear, we are mostly going for health. Because we did have to forfeit 20 points into strength. So we have to make up for it. Even also the resonance effect on the armor itself they do not give that crazy other values and like while other people might go into getting more evasion out of that we are already at 2k in that build anyways so it's not worth it that much to actually go into a higher evasion stat here for the resonance the set effects that we are aiming here are one the reaper effect that is giving us 20 one percent um, critical damage while we are actually able to get about 1.7 1.8 thousand critical hit so we are having that almost on all of our attacks up and we've also talked about how bonus damage is so strong that's why we are going with the ghost wolf set effect for 22 bonus damage when we are talking about um, accessories the first ring that you should be crafting is the insightful ring of dimension you can also craft that with the dimensional salvation tokens that we have talked about at the start and this ring here is basically really easy to obtain and really easy to max because you can target from it and for example, here with the skill damage boost, it's about 8% increase. This is something you should be rushing. At the start, you can, for example, also add like the uh, um, like another secondary ring here called the Transcendent Magic Ring. Even though it is best in slot, it's quite hard to obtain because it's a only drop from Queen Belendir, or you're doing it versus Substance, Transformation, and Rolling Accessories. So here at the start, you will probably um, have a Lethal Fortune Ring here with five decks and some attack speed as a placeholder until you can go into that ring right there. Another thing I have made sure that we have enough of is movement speed in PvP movement speed is like the goat stat it gives you so much potential to outplay other people especially in arena and all of that like the more you can stack the better and this build together with the passives will be able to run about 40 percent move speed which is insane to like create gaps or close gaps another thing that the build um, needs to have to function properly is range because the crossbow dagger is actually it does not feel like a giga range weapon it's more like a mid-range weapon more a bit like melee also and if you're having some range together with nimble leap and shadow strike it's fairly easy 
to gap close and going back to safety again. So about like 10 to 15% of range is wise to be played in the setup. Then let's talk a bit more about um, some defensive stats. So for example, if you're looking at the cloak right here, we can see that we are obviously choosing hit to stack magic and range evasion, right? But also skill damage resistance is a really important stat because if people with lots of skill damage boosts are attacking you and you do not have skill damage resistance, they will basically get a flat multiplier on their damage. And and that's really bad so try to keep that um, stacked as well don't like um, push it aside or give it like the lowest priority you want to keep some stack another important stat for pvp is going to be the debuff duration um, this is not increasing like the duration of your poison or your thunder clouds or something like that this is decreasing the time that enemies can cc you and having a decent amount of debuff duration is essential to survive a CC chain. We will get about 25%-ish here in that build, which will mean everything that we are getting CC from is like reduced by one fourth. So if you're getting a four second stun, for example, it would only last three seconds. And those seconds, like squeezing them out, can always decide, like for example, in the one with the one v one situation, who is winning. So let's go over the stats a little and what thresholds we are able to accomplish with that setup. So for the strength, we are getting for the 750 health right here. This is also enough to reach our 15k threshold. Dexterity is our main stat where we are able to reach about 60 in a tier 1 gear. The recent update has allowed it to have now breakpoints of 70. And that 70 breakpoint of dexterity looks really juicy because it's giving us another 120 evasion. Though on the tier 1 build I'm saying it's not worth it yet because you're sacrificing too many other defense stats at the moment to actually go for the 70. So I would not recommend doing it with the tier 1, wait for the tier 2 and then it's easy reachable. Wisdom in the spin to win, the highest problem is your mana. So after you go and engage in the enemies with the spin to win and you use your annihilation barrage and you want to get back out of safety, you will need mana afterwards. And if your build is not optimized for mana, then you will have huge issues in actually not being a suicide squad, like going in, dying, and that's it. Now you need something to fight afterwards as well. And what you're going to do for that is if you're having 40 wisdom and you're having the mana region on the suit right here, and on the pants, together with the other setup, you're actually fine. You can solve it with a pot. So we're going to go over later what that means for skills, because solving it that way actually gives you access to one more, more damage skill or like outplay potential in your skill overview. If we are going to perception, this is also why like the last four points no, where we're not able to reach something, thing, I just put into perception to get more hit because it gives us the hit in general. We're getting our range right here and um, this is our key. Now, before we go over the skills, I want to challenge you with something. So for example, here, I have um, taken another build that is also like level 50 geared and they are now having a combat simulator for PvP. And I've been checking probably the whole website, like all builds, if my build would be losing against builds from other people that are also like level 50 um, tier one. And I have not found a single build on the website where my build would be losing to. So you will see that right here, only 17% of the um, my attacks will be blocked, for example, by the enemy, while on the other hand i am blocking about 73. i challenge you create a build for crossbow dagger or find one on the website comment it down below that can beat my build right here and one side note is the build has to be functional no? of course you can beat it if you stack like one stat with everything that you have yeah but then the build will be unplayable so it has to be a real build that beats that one i challenge you put it in the comments i will take a look at all of them so now Let's go over the skills. What we want to have as a buff is Inject Venom with the Thunder Clouds edition. What Thunder Clouds is doing, it's applying a weakening to the enemy that is reducing the endurance of the enemy. 
And the, the more you reduce the endurance, the higher you are stacking the chance that you are critical hitting the enemy. We have talked about this previously. If you're looking at those weapons, the damage is 27 to 115. A critical hit means the highest damage on the weapon is being used for the rest of the damage calculation. Imagine how hard the, our character would suck if we would always have 27 as the base for every calculation. Like we would deal almost no damage. So being able to have high critical hit rate is essential. We are able to reach that with like almost 1.7, but also we are making sure that enemies that are stacking endurance are not successful with this. This is why the thunder clouds is really important. And there's one more reason that we're going to. For our 1v1, burst damage quick fire is our goal of choice we are going to make sure that we are increasing the attacks from three to four and we are making sure that every critical hit again important is in decreasing the cooldown by 10 percent then for an extra damage buff that is basically permanent up on all of our attacks we can go mother's nature protest into the um, lightning which is giving us 30 percent damage increase permanently now the other reason why we need Thunderclouds is our burst skill Brutal Incision. That is um, with the Thunderclouds bombing adaption for every Thunderclouds stack that you're applying to, it will actually get 36% more damage and that's boosted by, by 100%. So if we're having two stacks, that's boosted by 2k. This is insane. Like the burst you're able to put out there is really strong and obviously also the reason why we stack so much hit now because if we are relying on a burst skill and we're never hitting it because of the enemy's evasion then it's going to be useless something that um, is not necessary in the build i would say is like the ankle strike the reason why i like personally like to run ankle strike is it is a wrath attack and this is an option to counter fury attacks it's not as good in mass pvp for example because there it's really hard to time it but in like 1v1 or arena situations for me this is a must have if you are having mana problems like i've mentioned you were not able to solve them so probably also like in the early game then I would take mana exchange right here. If you are looking for another buff to increase your damage output, then I would go with Umbral Spirit right here. Then this is our spin to win core ability, the Merciless Barrage, that basically turns us into a living tornado and stealing a shit ton of AOE damage. And also it is based on your offhand weapon attack chance. The max that you can hit is 24 times. This is also the reason why your mana can run out once you use it. And also the reason why we want to put the Gale here. So if we can attack 24 times, Gale explodes to 150 after 10 attacks. Nah? So we can, in theory, proc that twice. This right here is also the reason why we are actually choosing the Rex Chimera's Rake Bow. Because you can see that bow here with 35% offhand weapon attack chance is the highest offhand weapon attack chance that is currently available and it's one of the bows that we can get early and now we are coming to the point where the heal of the bow matters when we are going into that engage with the annihilation barrage we will be healing and we will be doing dealing lots of offhand weapon attack chances so this will give us some sustain while we are in our spin to win mode next up we are having the mortal mark can also be replaced with like fatal stigma this is more like a, a bit of a personal preference i think since we're not having enough sp skill specializations to actually put out something of mortal mark the other things are just more damage it i think mortal mark is better because it has lower cone ground than like fatal stigma and fatal stigma only excels if you are able to use the uh, um, deduction on it from the specializations then we are having one of our core actually defense of abilities even though this is increasing our offhand weapon attack chance and reducing our cooldowns and such i would say it's like the best defensive thing that we have because with that specialization here we are able to remove cc and this is also why i previously mentioned that we have some other counterplays to outplay like great sword dagger players assassins and this is one of them then we are having nimble leap this is even though it is a mobility skill it's actually the reason why we can deal so much burst damage with this combo. Because if we are going into the specializations here of Nimble Leap cooldown reset, we are able to reset the quick fire cooldown completely. We can stack Nimble Leap twice with that one. So that means we can burst with three quick fires in a row no cooldown that's a lot of burst and also really easy to apply 20 thunder stacks if we are having inject venom if we are 
try not having like the time or we want to go close we can actually use our cleaving moonlight to get to the setup for the brutal incision easier so that will be that we are going for the consecutive use so we can able we are able to do it twice and then we are often having the option to apply weakening thunder as well so that makes it really easy to get to the 20 stack though this is not necessarily needed so if you are playing like really well no? you know out of the end game it's more of a arena situation than a mass situation then you can also remove this right here and rather go for that one and because this will also allow you to pick up the um, in decreased cooldown of the camouflage cloak and that way you are able to um, have 15% attack speed up while this is up you have three seconds to use it a second time and previously you would just spam it use it twice you know, to get the stacks up go into brutal incision now you can actually use it once then you will have for the three seconds the 15 percent attack speed up running the whole time and then just in the end you will try to use it one more time so this depends a bit on your play style both are viable then for shadow strike um there's also two options that you can go um so the, the what i think is mandatory is the 40 percent range because this is what the class is lacking and if you're able to gap close going into range to reuse your dagger skills and burst now while then disengaging with like nimbly quick fire while you're still dealing damage in the disengage it's like really strong if you really like the assassin's play and you have trouble like actually after engage you're killing people and you want to get out you could also go for the shadow escape right here because this will allow you after you engage with shadow strike and you kill someone for example or you're not able to kill him to go back to where you actually started and maybe survive then let's go over the masteries for the dagger we are going for the bottom one also important to note here is that the dagger has the evasion that you want to um, pick up for the crossbow it's actually here different than in pve for pve you would go all the way to the bottom in um, pvp you wouldn't do that because we already talked about that movement speed is like such a valuable stat and we are actually able to get 6.5 percent here so this is why for pvp you would rather go that direction now that we are already talking about weapons this is also again what are you wearing first hand what are you wearing second hand it's actually you do both because for example if you are in melee range you never want to be attacking with your crossbow you always want to switch your weapon to dagger for your auto attacks in between skills and whatever if you are ranged and you're for example gap closing to an enemy walking towards them and you would be wearing your dagger you would be dealing no auto attacks, no damage while you're gap closing or while you're like trying to kite the enemy. So whenever it's a range, you're going to switch to crossbow. And as if you are close, you're going to go and switch to dagger. Another reason why you might want to switch to dagger while you're disengaging, for example, is if you might, if you need the evasion cost the own when we are talking about masteries, the um, only the mastery is active of the weapon that you're currently using. So this is going to be the build that I will be playing as always, like all my other guides, I will keep them up to date. And here on, we will also have one special thing. Once Global releases, I will do daily updates on my current gear. So you can follow the progress that I am doing. How I am doing my decision making on like what to trade in which order exactly so you can follow that live on this website right here or you can just go and um, ask in the stream I will try to answer everything similar to my comments where I answer everything in less than 24 hours so if you have any questions don't hesitate asking cheers guys